So for some push prep work, you could use something like a ball or you could even just kind of be even sitting on the ball or just being on the floor, any position. I love a physio ball though. So if you could get one of these, these are awesome. I think this one's 65 centimeters. So essentially one of the big things that happens when we are when we are delivering a baby or we're, we're pushing, um, we're actually lengthening and relaxing, lengthening our pelvic floor. So our pelvic floor should not be squeezing. It's actually very similar to what occurs when we have a bowel movement. Um, ideally, we go to sit onto the toilet. Um, there's some pressure things that are happening, some reflexes that are occurring, and our pelvic floor actually relaxes, and we get some pressure from our abdominal muscles to help um, evacuate the bowels. Oftentimes, there's actually gonna be some like pushing or straining going on to where these pelvic floor muscles kick on and squeeze more. So that's, um, if you especially have a history of some constipation or straining, it's really good to think of practicing some of these things for delivering a baby, because it's very similar mechanics. One of the big things is that when the baby, it, when babies are being born, it's actually the uterus that's doing most of the pushing and the pelvic floor is mostly relaxing. And we may be using our core a little bit to help with that. So one of the first main concepts is actually breathing. So there's this concept of what's called open glottis pushing. So for the most part, um, this is the type of breathing that we wanna have through most of the delivery. And what the glottis is, is, is this part of the throat. So um, what it's essentially saying is that we wanna be breathing with our mouth open versus with our mouth closed. Um, so that would be what's called open glottis pushing. So it might look like, like I'm following him here. That's open glottis. And actually you could try that right now. What do you, can you feel what's happening at your pelvic floor when you do that? I get some downward pressure without a lot of pushing, right? So just kind of helping to open and relax the pelvic floor and getting some of this downward pressure. You may get some closed, closed glottis pushing too and that's, um, that's actually happens during delivery as well, more so like kind of in a more emergent situations or times when we really need to get baby to come through, then there might, they might, you might be told to hold your breath and push. Um, but ideally that it shouldn't be something that you're cued a lot for. So that's what open glottis pushing really means. Um, and then lastly, what I would re really focus on is just practicing feeling what your pelvic floor is doing. So the nice thing about a ball here is you can kind of you know, lean or be supported over the ball. And then in, and this is a, actually a really nice position because the pelvic floor is innately already gonna be a little bit more open and relaxed here. As long as you practice it, it feels comfortable. Like here, this feels very comfortable for me. I also practice this kind of, I, have a bowel movement in this position well more upright but essentially the same position for my hips right so in this position feels very good to me and this is a position that i could practice some of that breathing techniques so i'm kind of thinking of that open glottis exhalations long and big so um, that's one thing. And I'm actually using my core a little bit here. So as I'm inhaling in, my belly is expanding. As I exhale, my belly is actually staying pretty big, pretty firm versus pulling in my belly. I'm trying not to pull in my core and kind of a typical core contraction type of thing you might think of when you think of like activate your core, you might think of pulling your belly button towards your spine. And really what's happening when I pull my belly button towards my spine, you could even try that right now and feel what happens when I do that. My pelvic floor kicks on, does a Kegel or a squeeze. And we don't want that. We want the pelvic floor to be able to open and relax when we have that, that um, when we're pushing. So good time to practice. Exhale long, exhale pushing down. And when I say push down, it's happening more from that breath and more from the belly, pelvic floor is staying open and relaxed. Another really nice cue here could be even kind of leaning forward on the ball, take your hands and put them right on your sit bones. So that's where you would go and sit. And then even here, think of those sit bones coming apart. They're spreading apart a little bit as you're attempting to do that exhalation downward movement. So might be leaning onto the ball, exhale. Think of those hands coming apart from each other, going away. Another really nice way to practice some pelvic floor opening is by being in this quadruped position and uh, doing some of these rock backs with your knees in different positions. So if I'm 
Um, in trying to open up the pelvic outlet, I actually can do that a little bit better by bringing my knees, my feet out to the side, my knees in, and working on a little bit of rocking here. So essentially what's happening, I'm gonna show you my butt. What's happening is when I'm here, here's my sit bones. If I bring my feet out, my hip bones are moving out and away. So I can feel that a little bit. As I rotate out, my hip bones are moving out this way slightly. It's not huge, but it's happening. So um, I can be in this position here and I can work on just kind of rocking back. It would look like this. My feet are out to the side, knees are kind of slightly in. I'm just rocking back in that position, thinking of those hip bones opening and widening. Could be a really lovely birthing position just to kind of get things moving and going, especially those early stages of labor. I always recommend to practice this kind of stuff beforehand. You could try just different positions, just feels, you know, I'm trying to find something that is also somewhat promoting some relaxation ultimately. So again, practicing these things beforehand, kind of feel what works well for your body or what doesn't work well for your body. And then a little bit, a little bit later into the um, delivery, just depending on where the baby's located, you may even find that you would want to have your kind of um, feet in, uh, knees in, feet away, and do some rocking back that way. And actually, that can open up pelvic floor as well, especially right there at the opening. So, knees out, feet in, working on some rock backs here too. Get some pressure downwards there, and I can practice that with my breathing. So. Can even practice this sitting on a ball so lots of different ways to practice this again I always recommend try practicing some of this when you're on the toilet it's already a good time we're already sitting oftentimes we're already maybe a little bit elevated if we have that squatting potty there um, and it's similar again it's similar mechanics for when we're having that baby so just a quick review we talked a little bit about open glottis Pushing, so that's where we're exhaling through the keeping the mouth open. Um, you can kind of think of fogging up the mirror. Uh, you could even feel pelvic floor actually usually should drop and relax a little bit as we do that type of breath pattern. We also just talked about a couple different positions that can be really helpful for opening up pelvic floor uh, and getting it to lengthen. We also mentioned that the core is doing some of that work too. Ultimately, the uterus is going to do the big bulk of it, but core is going to be kicking on to help to get that pressure to deliver downwards as well. And there's some several different positions that I recommend practicing um, before you go into deliver to see if that feels comfortable for you and your body to um, get some movement of the help get baby to move downwards for you and open up pelvic floor. So I hope you find this video helpful. If you have any other questions, feel free to contact me.